I'm about to catch up on some um some role play because I have the next rollout of plots, I would say. Um that I know I want to like main story stuff, you know, plots that are rolled by by Mythic um and directed by me. I am now going to go into the role play and, and and just catch up on what all you all have been doing um and then see if there are more plots that can be rolled um, and or connected to what I've currently rolled up because I have something really dope lined up um, as a result of that contest. All right, I'm going to start from the top at the makeshift hospital. This is from Eden. Is there a way to pop out the chat? Just been visiting family and cooking something. How do I pop this out? I guess I can't. Okay, it's okay. All right, makeshift hospital. Eden, while everybody was busy with the bloody trial, Eden had been left alone with her thoughts inside the ruined tavern where the artist had started the shadowy ritual. And it's like remnants there. Well, I'm sure they cleaned up a little bit more. When I imagine the town is a lot more cleaned up than it was initially um, after the events of not only episode two, but at towards the end of episode two, we were kind of surmising that because of the, the less distractions than the trial being over, um, Eden was able to organize and manage a, a, a effort to clean up a little bit more. So when I see her standing inside of the, the, the ruined tavern, I don't imagine it to be as bad as it, as it used to be. So she's standing in the ruined tavern. She didn't want to witness the almost certain execution to meddle in those murky affairs. OK, so she didn't want to. She wasn't even present at the trial. She didn't want to see any of that. She was focused. She didn't want to take side. Uh, she says to take sides was to make enemies. And she was quite a cautious woman. Her discussion with Nazareth had already tipped the balance she strived to maintain. And there was no need to engage further in those matters. Whatever happened during the trial, I'll learn it one way or another. She thought while cleaning up and making some basic repairs here and there, she tried to picture in her mind how she wanted the place to become a common room, an infirmary, a small library, her small personal quarters, a storeroom, things like that to begin with, at least hoping that the tower settlement would survive the next week. The place could really become a friendly hub. Her priority was the well-being of the population for now. Her research would continue only after things had stabilized. She thought about calling the place the Golden Bow. I think I'm pronouncing that right. It's B-O-U-G-H. Is that boff? Buff? It's, it's bow, right? It's spelled like no. The Golden Bow. Like a very interesting essay she had read decades earlier. It sounded nice to her ears. The Golden Bow. That's the golden saucer. The trial had come and gone, and with it, the unconscious body of Nazareth, which had been left in her care after the showdown before the execution. The truth was that she didn't really like the man whom she considered a sort of wild, dangerous beast. However, his followers would blame her if he died under her care. And if there's any confusion, Nazareth does have followers, even though uh, we recently watched them have little to no impact. It doesn't mean that they don't exist. There are people that follow follow Nazareth uh, mainly because that is part of his character. And there was an effort. There has been an effort to acquire followers since the first episode. They were helping him fight. They're backing him up. Um, they currently, as it stands, they are not significant enough um, due to some bad roles, as everyone saw. Very, very bad roles, like all of them were losses. However, his followers, followers would blame her if he died under her care. And she wasn't really the kind of person to willingly leave someone to die, even one of her own, even one of her enemies. She believed in redemption. And so she took care of his wounds as she would for anyone else. Who knows? Maybe him owing her a debt would help her in the future in her spare time she continued to fix the building and soon the common room was ready to host at least some rogues it was really rustic but it was better than nothing style would come later she hung a rough wooden sign outside on the road with the name 
with a golden bow handwritten on it. The golden bow has just been marked. All right. Zanera says, I was taught it was pronounced like what you do in front of a king. Bow. The golden bow. Okay. That sounds a lot better. Bow. The golden bow. Okay. Thank you for that. The golden bow. Okay. Yo, wait till you see what has been rolled up. Oh, man. You were here for the last stream uh, where we had established the House of Tiny Lies. Man, I rolled up the the, uh, the leader of the House of Tiny Lies. I rolled up what they're going to be doing, like their motivations and intentions. Let's continue because I believe your role play is coming up. Let's continue. All right. Zanera and Ianga. Before departing, Zanera had come to Eden, clutching a small leather bound book in her hands. Yo, I feel like... The ideally the whole the reason of the role play is this is this is the story this is the meat you know between the episodes and all of this and there will be exceptions like if you know if I see something that I feel that shouldn't be canon or can't be because maybe there's a rule or character broken or setting has been broken um, I'll make a judgment call but ideally this is all canon so as I read this for the first time I feel like I am continuing to watch one of my favorite shows. My favorite show, The Master Plane. Running back. Before departing, Zanera had come to Eden, clutching a small leather bound book in her hands. It had once been part of a volume, laying out the proper way of tanning hides with plenty of blank pages for apprentices to take notes. Having been spared the destruction, Zanera had used those blank pages to write an account of what she remembered from the trial. She presses it into her hands. Quote, oh, this is what she's saying. I thought you and the others should know of what happened, at least as best as we can recollect. I'm sorry to be depriving you of a healer, but we need to know what's out there. And whoever's brave enough to go should have someone with my skills in case things go bad. And it's probably good for me to get some distance from your newest patient. That's true. She glanced at Nazareth for a brief moment. Good luck. I know you'll keep doing what you have been. I hope to see you again. And I think that's when she goes out with um, Will and them. Without a chance to be drawn into longer conversation or goodbyes, Zanera departs to meet her comrades who will venture north, leaving the pages into Eden's care. Oh, and this is a link to the journal entry. Let's read it. Oh, shit. Oh, All right, it led me to a journal entry on Zanera's page. The battle for the artist's soul. An account. Hey, what's up, Oiji? So I wrote that just after seeing episode two and wanted to fill out my world anvil page. We are reading role play. I'm going to go through and read the role play that's in here to catch up before I roll out the next events for the show. And currently I have in front of me some role play from Zanera. Um, she left some accounts to Eden, some pages to Eden. Um, and I'm getting ready to read it. I, Zanera. I am no great scribe. In my youth, I had no great love of the parchments and records of our people, preferring more to be running around the camps or learning the healing arts through practice and repetition. I sit here in our makeshift hospital, an unfitting description for, through the efforts of many, it has become a staple safe haven for our fractured community. And somewhere, I truly feel comfortable, all things considered. I am not a doctor this day, but a patient, having been carried in barely conscious after the events that unfolded. I know I cannot stay, for even before the battle I knew others were planning to explore the darkness. Not only may our best chances for knowledge need not only may our best chances for knowledge need a healer in their midst, but I mys I but I myself yearn to see more beyond our bastion of safety, to see what remains of the world and what we can use to build ourselves back from the brink. Now I have an added incentive, for in this very hospital sits a formidable being whose status 
as an ally hangs by a thread, and with the bloodlust that will now firmly be fixed upon myself, or rather, she whose soul is entwined with my own. Leaving seems more prudent than ever, so I must entrust my account to another so they may know what transpired. Better writers than I, no doubt, have put onto page the beginnings of our tale, the accusations against the artist and the trial that ensued. I was present, owing my life to Samuel Andrews, a being and being a first-hand observer, I was summoned as a witness, supporting his strong instinct for proper procedure prior to judgment. I will not repeat my testimony. The cause of the darkness is not in dispute. It was what followed that echoes in my mind. We did not think there would be any more revelations. The crowd was restless and eager for blood, but had been quelled to the notion of things being done in order. Nazareth's appearance was unexpected. He arrived with his mon with his entourage of followers. I had heard of, excuse me. I had heard of the man, but the religious figure vying for dominion over our settlement had peaked much beyond idle curiosity before now. I thought we had much more pressing concerns than than who claims a title over our rock of solace floating in a void sea. What were kings and countries to my people? We weren't where the water and winds dictated. Allegiance was made in a shaken hand and broken when we left their horizon, but I recall seeing his physique, the sheer scale of the man. If that was what he if if that was what he was, and I felt small, but I recall seeing his physique, the sheer scale of the man, if that if that was what he was, and I felt small. Samuel, as the self appointed keeper of these proceedings, didn't protest. I guess he thought Nazareth to bring testimony or to interrogate our captive, our captive like others. Does that does thou bow to thy king? The booming words stunned us. Did Nazareth really seek to claim this condemned man for his flock? Had uh, had we since we would have objected, stopped the proceedings or even beheaded the artist before he could give answer? We did none, merely watched with frozen impotence as the artist sensing, I believe, more a chance for chaos than of servitude bowed his head nazareth was more ready for the response than any in the space of a single breath we went from having an accused sorcerer awaiting execution to one of his disciples about to be killed as the god king watched on we now all stood in his way i was not the first to act nor did i feel like a great warrior to stand against a titanic man Darren Lone Swift had that accolade, his shield in place as I took as I looked on. I saw Nazareth shatter the hardened wood and metal to splinters through pure force. If he had slowed at all, I did not perceive it. But Samuel Andrews made the first strike, defending his court through his might. His chain was like a, sinu a sinuous limb of his hands striking and wrapping around Nazareth as he started to draw down strange power into himself. I could scarce believe it, but Samuel matched and halted at Nazareth. Their strength that moment equal, for that moment equal, neither budging, my savior stood on the brink. I felt his destruction could come at any moment. Yo, that was crazy. Like he rolled, I think it was an exceptional yes on like the strength contest. Man, they started strong. We must help him. My thoughts turned inwards, stirring the elemental that half slumbered beneath the surface of my mind. I knew the sounds of a fight would have her on high alert, and her response was quick and biting. In trouble again, little sparrow? What is this man to me? Remember, it was I who saved us that night. Ayanga's words may have conveyed indifference but I could sense the hunger at seeing violence erupt around us. Yo, this shit is so fire. This perspective, this, this, this introspective perspective of Zanera and Ayanga as this shit is unfolding. I didn't know I needed this. I didn't know I needed this. Whew. Yo, are you going to give us this perspective after every event? Oh my God. Yes. Yes.
Okay. Lazuli had entered the fray, her staff a blistering flurry of blows upon Nazareth that he seemed to shrug off. I could see others drawing their, their own powers, hands clasped in prayer. I felt it wouldn't be enough. Not nearly enough. They aren't strong enough alone. I'm his ally. Nazareth will sweep me aside as well. He is the threat. He is the threat. I could feel my control slipping. Iango was waking up and she sensed that I was desperate enough to slip the reins entirely. A spirit of Iango's power is a dangerous thing. And often we wrestle as I try to mitigate the destruction she wishes to unleash upon anything that irks her. I channeled my focus into creating a clear image of Nazareth. Without words, I impressed on Ayanga that this was her target. All around was to be kept safe. He's all yours. I faded from the world, slipping into a state that was part slumber, part idle passenger. Before I sank into that place, I heard the almighty boom of Ayanga's power unleashed. The lightning bolt erupting from our arm to hit Nazareth square in the chest and thunderous sounds stunning everyone into a shocking pause. My last concrete impression is seeing Nazareth still standing from such an onslaught. And for the first time, <laughs> for the first time in my life, I had a, I had an ounce of concern for Ayanga. Yo, I am imagining that you are sharing a body with a, a, a entity that has bodied everything you've ever had an issue with. And the last thing you're seeing and hearing is Ayanga blasting and the target is still standing there smiling and you're leaving. You're on your way out. So you don't even know if you're coming back to a body and all i can picture is the, the the image of nazareth that we had of him standing there smiling oh that is that was such a good point to hit on ayanga says i have now sparrow i have now sparrow and it was glorious well this is ayanga talking now zanera wants a true perspective of the battle so she is interrupting my well-deserved sleep for these stupid scribblings why she cares about such things is beyond me but let's indulge her for it lets me relive one of my finest battles and let those not in attendance know my power know now that a primal creature is addressing you instead of my mortal prison ayanga agreed to sharing her perspective as well let's hear it my entrance was if i must say rather excellent i had seen through a haze the form of Nazar and the in in the in the ineffectual attacks of the mortals, the ineffectual attacks of the mortals. My strike was pure, hitting him in his entire oh, in his center, and I reveled in seeing all eyes see my true face. I'm not one for worship, but the awe they showed was fitting. I had seen it before the eyes of the jinn, before their fear had taken over, and they had exiled me to this plane. Others stepped up in the wake of my strike to press an advantage. Vines ensnaring the acolytes of Nazareth, snapping bones or, or smothering to immobility. I saw an axe-wielding man moving with intent. Was he about to steal my thunder? An odd phrase, Zen assures me, is correct, but thunder was my domain, my core. My enemy still stood, so I struck again. His fortitude was indeed impressive. An ordinary man would be blasted to pieces, but he remained. The staff woman surprised me by conjuring fire, a pale spark to the flames of cosmos I have known in another life. But interesting nonetheless, my foe was resolute, growing scales of armor because of the threat of my power, no doubt. That's true. The woman's stick of wood shattered, and she stood in his wake. Courage outpacing her since help her zen really is a bleeding heart sometimes if this woman stands before a being of power and cannot match it isn't her life forfeit forfeit it to the one strong enough to affect fate to affect fate like this pitiful sorcerer they were all fighting over he had every right to use his power to affect the world and as he proved he wasn't strong enough to finish the job those who brought him low had the right to end him why did mortals why did mortals make things so complicated? Zen was insistent. 
and I thought I would indulge and reward the bravery. So I flew to take the woman from harm and from harm in the appending blow. I remember that. Give me one second. My foe's swings were meant to fell trees or even mountains, but I was born where there were no there was no up or down and barely form until we willed it into existence. I moved beyond through air. I moved beyond through air that was like water to me. His eyes were red, and I saw in his confidence he would not to th- he would not think to evade a retaliation. My blast thrummed throughout my being and landed upon his face, shattering those scales of his and hurling him onto his back. I stood proud and watched him recover, the charred blackening from shorn scales. The jaw marked with the painful wound was glorious. He truly saw me for a moment. He acknowledged my power. In truth, I respected the same that he wielded. No other in this plane had so far taken such punishment from me without crumbling. We both wished to know who would control the other's fate today. The man of the smited shield spoke words asking for a stay in combat that Nazareth could still be our ally, his power used to build rather than fight us. What arrogance to think his sword would ever be contest as a, as a plow. Plow? Plow? I was surprised to see him almost consider it, though perhaps he doubted he was truly the pinnacle of might in this land when faced against us all. The sorcerer was feeding on our conflict though, and it took only a mocking question of his prowess to renew his fervor. That man understands the nature of things. Be strong and shape the world, or be proven weak and be affected. Nazareth would show he had the right to remake this place in his image, but not while I was here. He rushed seeing me as his biggest threat and the key to proving his strength. The axe man swung, but another tool was reduced to tender. Nazareth was a bull in a straight line he sought to bring me low. Another blast of mine sent scales flying, his protection asunder. He may have well fought through that too, and I would feel that strength upon my form if Samuel had not struck at the weak point I had laid bare. His skull was dealt a mighty blow, and he was felled. My enemy had been brought down even though his might reaching its limits. My enemy had been brought down, even his might reaching its limits. I moved to finish him, to blast his body to pieces and render him unable to affect dominion on us. What other course is there? Lantier imprisoned me, the light from the celestial wet blanket dousing my fury. I felt tired. Before my imprisonment, I was without limit. I could have faced hundreds of Nazareths. Lantier reminded me of my new state. Of forcing, my, of forcing my being through the funnel of this reality and how hard it was. They also roused Zanera, asking for her aid in tempering my vengeance. I was done. For now, Nazareth lives, as do I, unless some new force unites us. We will clash again. That will be another very interesting day. Bravo, that will be another interesting day. And that is the battle of the artist's soul, an account from Zanera and Ayanga, from both of them. That was beautiful. That was amazing. There will be another day unless something unites them. Oiji, I am on the market for something in the same vein of World Anvil. Um, World Anvil is very costly and I haven't been using it to its max potential to justify the cost. Um, so I would like to change I just need something that's going to allow me to to uh, organize lore. The social character profile aspect that is uh you know that's lug that's that's quality of life stuff that I can go without. So let me know what you recommend. Zanera says that account is physically sitting there in the hospital. The account is physically sitting there in the hospital. So anyone could theoretically read it if they found it. Like Nazareth. Okay. So this is on the pages that were left. Okay, good to know. All right, let's go back to the makeshift hospital. Samuel Andrews, walking away from the gate, Samuel's thoughts turned to the strange figure. 
He was skeptical of the individual's wor words, but he didn't have any other choice than to have faith in the promise that was made. After all, he couldn't be everywhere. And Samuel knew where, he, where his place in all of this was, in the Tower Settlement, doing what he can to maintain the peace and assist in converting his home out of necessity into a sanctuary for any lost soul that needed respite. But to do that, he needed to do something he was not going to like. Approaching the makeshift hospital, he notices the new addition of the golden bow, golden bow sign outside of the structure, almost like a symbol of the ongoing efforts to improve this place. Re-entering the hospital, he looks to the bed that still houses Nazareth. Samuel's gaze falls on the injuries sustained during this clash with Zanera, noting how much he has recovered in such a short amount of time. Turning towards Eden, he approaches with a determined stride. Has he awoken yet? Eden. Eden has received and set aside Zanera's report about the trial, skimming it for now and leaving a full reading for the evening. Returning to her cleaning and caring for the wounded Nazareth, she welcomed Samuel. Welcome to the golden bow, she said with a soft smile. No, I fear I still haven't been able to wake him up, she said, looking at Nazareth, though not too worried. He has incredible stamina. However, I believe it won't take much time for him to recover, at least physically. I don't know how he will react upon waking. Samuel looks down at Nazareth, a look of disdain crossing his face. He strikes me as a prideful man. So there is no telling what he would be like upon awakening, but I can't see it being good. Returning his gaze at Eden, his weathered face softened slightly. I did not see you at the trial for the artist, but your reputation precedes you. I've heard how you've been on the forefront of the restoration efforts within the tower settlement. And for that, you have my respect. Samuel bows his head slightly, a show of respect for the healer. These are certainly troubling times. And the only way we can hope to combat the conflict ahead of us is to stand together. If you need a hand in the restoration efforts, you only you need only ask. In the meantime, I will do what I can to maintain peace around these parts, as well assist in the defenses of the tower settlement. Samuel takes a seat in an empty chair by Nazareth's bed. But first, I have business to attend to. Eden, I hope he doesn't take out his rage on me. She looks at the unconscious form of Nazareth, slightly worried. While the man hasn't asked for the reason for her absence at the trial, she feels it's better to spell it out. I'm not fond of executions, you see, and it was quite clear to me that the trial would ultimately end in that man's death. I did not wish to witness it. I'm just tending to the wounded and repairing this damaged building. I fear my competence in the crafting arts is quite lacking. There's certainly someone who has come to me for guidance, but that's it. I can be no replacement for real leadership. The settlement will have to find someone to fill that role. She has various candidates in mind, but no one could rule alone. For such a situation, it would be more suited to have something akin, akin to a small council. I don't know if you have a place to call home, but I hope I'll be able to host those in need of accommodation, particularly those rogues important to the community and those exploring the darkness outside. Feel free to stay here as long as you like. Feel free to stay here as long as you like, though I admit that resources are strained. I don't have any particular requests, by the way. If your specialty is to maintain peace and order, you are welcome to do so. A lawless town would indeed be quite dangerous. Do you have business with this man? She asks in an uncertain questioning tone. That's what I want to know because he sat next to him and he said he had a business to attend to. What could that be about? What could that be about? Let's find out. I don't blame you. I can't stand executions either, Samuel says, his gaze remaining on Nazareth, but his sights set on something outside his, ga his grasp. That's why I stopped alive from executing the artist during the chaos. I had thought that maybe, maybe we could get more information out of him if he was tried, maybe find a motive that could make sense of everything. You know, the reason we know so much now is because he kept him alive. And by we, I, I guess I should put we as in Willem knows, um, Oiji knows, 
Lantier knows some. Sam knows what what the artist said about, you know, the cryptic things he said about he really created life despite purging, killing everything, removing everything. Cryptically, he's saying that he pretty much clean cleaned a slate. We wouldn't even know that much if he was just dead. We would know nothing of what he had uh, done with that spell. So that's why I stopped alive from executing the artist during the chaos. I had thought that maybe we could get more information out of him if he was tried. Maybe find a motive that could make sense of everything. But all I found was a madman seeking death and destruction for no understandable reason. In the end, the only fair verdict of the people was death. A verdict that I refused to be a part of. So I relinquished the artist to a lie and left. We've lost a lot. I'm not losing my coat as well. Samuel takes a deep breath, returning his gaze to Eden. What a time to be what a time to be living in. What a time to be living in, eh? Despite the fact that Samuel phrases that last part as a question, he continues to talk almost as if though an answer is not needed. I thank you for your hospitality, but I'll continue to rest at the prison. I have some repairs that still excuse me that still require to be seen to when I'm not assisting in the restoration efforts when I'm not assisting in the restoration efforts as for what business I have for this as for what business I have for this man returning his gaze to Nazareth I'm not here to arrest him if that's what you're worried about I'm here to see if I can talk some sense into him to utilize his skills in defense of the tower settlement Looking back at Eden, I'll also give him some time to focus his I'll also give him someone to focus his anger on. So don't worry about this ire about his ire. Worst case scenario, if I say run, run, his eyes hardened by the prospect of going toe to toe with Nazareth, a fight that Samuel has no idea how it would end. Eden, I hope they would at least understand something before executing the man. She sighs. It's really regrettable, a lack of foresight for those pushing such punishment. Some people are more gifted in brawn than in brain. She casts a sympathetic smile at the man. Oh, I wouldn't have objected if you had wanted to arrest him. I'm, it's not my place to do so. If you think you can compel him to do something useful, please do so. Please do so. I can't say I know him well, but from the few facts I'm aware of, he needs something to focus on aside from himself and the power he seeks. She nods at the suggestion to run away in a worst case scenario. I'm not a fighter, so I'll do just that, Samuel. I would have liked to get more out of him, but the man was not talking. The only words he said were to escalate the desire for his antagonistic manner is what ultimately led Nazar to continue until he was in this condition. Samuel's eyes narrow, unfocusing on Eden and the hospital around him. Though I don't condone executions, maybe now in death, the artist would be more willing to assist in our understanding. The spiritist from earlier, what was his name? Willem? Maybe he would be able to communicate with the artist for answers. Unfortunately, he is among those who have left to explore the surrounding world beyond the miasma. I will have to ask him upon his return. Hmm. Though I don't condone his executions, maybe now in death the artist would be we oh that's a you one would come to that that thought, having had seen Willem speak to the dead. Because Samuel doesn't know that um Denise found no soul. Samuel's eyes focus on Eden once again. As for Nazareth, we will have to see how compelled he is to do something useful when he Do you mind if I wait here? In the meantime, now I know Nazareth w eventually wakes up spoilers because I saw him in the chat role playing. So I am looking forward to seeing what transpired. Eden, if I catch sight of the spiritist um, upon his return, do you want me to tell him something? She asks gently, trying to be helpful to the man. And please stay as long as you'd like. I'm called Eden, by the way. Pleased to make your acquaintance, sir. Where are my manners? Samuel asks, rising from his seat. His body straightens to his full height. Samuel Andrews, it's a pleasure to meet you as well, Eden. His voice booming with formality, a sign of his training while in the guard. His hands extends toward Eden. A coil of chain is noticeably wrapped around wrist. And if you see Willem before I have the privilege, let him know. 
I would like to inquire upon the limitations of his abilities. Based on his performance at the trial, I'm aware that he is a skilled spiritist capable of bridging the gap between life and death. But is he capable of speaking with an entity as powerful and as dangerous as the artist? Eden stands before him, taking, his, taking in his appearance. She is quite tall for a woman, but certainly shorter than him. The man seems like a reliable, honest person, the type she prefers to work with. She smiles as she gently grasps his hand and bows her head. The pleasure is mine, Samuel. I feel safer knowing that someone like you is around here. I'll relay your message if I get the chance, and if you need anything else, please tell me. All right. Thank you, Eden. I will be sure to do just that, and I know that if you need anything from me, I am more than willing to return the gesture. Though his voice softens, his body remains as on edge as before, ready for any danger that, am that may arise. Finishing his conversation with Eden, Samuel returns to a seat where he waits for Nazareth to awaken. Oiji stepped into the hospital, his eyes landing immediately on a patient that seemed to be in discomfort. He stepped over and laid a hand on her forehead. He whispered a quiet hush and their breathing slowed to a more even paced and rhythm. He looked up to see both Sam and Eden, two of the three souls he was looking for. <laughs> That's some mystic shit to say. Ah, you, you are, here's two of my favorite souls. Just, just the souls I was looking, just the vessels, just the walking soul vessels I was looking for. Dust friends, he called them as he walked over trying to be as disarming as possible. He did need them on his side after all. He gave a bow to them, both of them. Eden had just returned to her work dealing with the wounded and pondering the building's development. Things were moving fast and she had to maintain the pace both for herself and for others. She turned toward the, the man who had just entered the golden bow. Bow. She had seen many faces in the past few days, but she was quite sure she had not yet met this one. Eden gracefully returned the bow, even though her appearance was more disheveled than usual, because she's tired. We know she's tired of holding that, that visage spell. Welcome to the golden bow, she said with a soft smile. Do you need something? Are you perhaps wounded? I'm sorry, this place is still a mess, but I hope it'll get better in the coming days and weeks. And Samuel watches Oiji as he approaches Nazareth. He remembers the man as one of the individuals who paid the artist a visit prior to the trial. His body stiffens as he begins to brace himself for, for any eventuality. What? Oiji's attempts to appear disarming fall flat for Samuel, who is, unentrust, who is untrusting to most. However, Samuel doesn't acknowledge Oiji's attempt at conversation by nodding his head, choosing to let Eden handle further conversation, for now at least. Oiji gave a genuine smile in return, probably his first since being here in the settlement. She has genuine care, he thought, taking her in. She's making apologies for her accomplishments. Humble. She would do perfectly. Yo, it's, yo Oiji's conniving. No healing. No, healing is not what I require, but I do request your presence later this evening, he said, handing her a letter. He turned to Sam, a, nodded, a nod of respect as he offered him one as well. Inside are the details of this evening's discussion. I think it prudent we assist each other. I also come offering assistance with your rebuild effort. We have found a rather vast supply of wood to restore this place. Yo, first off, let me pause there. This, I feel like it's like, this is like a perfect exchange here. Like as I'm reading these, it's kind of like how when I prepare an episode and you all watch and listen to the episode, you don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen as I'm reading this. So it's like we're taking turns. A meeting, Eden asked curiously, taking the letter from his hands and glancing over it briefly. I'm honored to be included in such a discussion, she said. For people who, who, who don't know, the reason this, this interaction between Oiji and Eden is interesting is because Eden wrote a letter to anyone willing to to anyone willing to be um, to take the role as a leader. Oiji passes that letter off to a lie because she is one of the people that essentially would want to, you know, take the role as a leader of the town. 
So there's a very political, there's some political, you know, there's political flavors at play in the mix. I'll do my best to participate, but if any of my patients' conditions suddenly worsen, I might be unable to attend. However, I hope that won't be the case. She smiled, though her expression was tinged with tiredness and fatigue. Ah, so you were one of those who ventured outside. The wood is certainly most welcome, she nodded, happy to hear such good news. Was it dangerous out there? Samuel accepts the letter, taking it in his hand. Reading through, the, he finds himself immediately skeptical of Oiji's motives, but thinking that there could be some merit to attending. Samuel knows the settlement needs unity in order to survive. In fact, that is the reason he's sitting here next to Nazareth. Who else have you invited to this? Samuel's asking the right questions. He glances down at the letter. Meeting of the minds. Ooh, meeting of the minds. Oh! Nazareth opens his eyes slowly as he is revived to consciousness. Suddenly, the memories of the recent battle flooded into his mind, and a deep-seated rage boiled over his entire body. But suddenly and unexpectedly, even by Nazareth himself, the rage quelled within him into a virgining clarity. The pain he feels is unimaginable, yet he is fixated on the man sitting beside him that catches his eye. Nazareth coughs and turns towards Samuel slowly. You've come to finish what we've started. Now's as good a time as you will never see as you will ever see again. Now, as good a time as you will ever, ever, ever see again. Uh, Samuel's gaze shifts from Oiji to Nazareth as he begins to stir. As the man speaks, he feels momentarily relieved realizing that Nazareth isn't going to start attacking people from the moment he wakes up. But that moment is short-lived as he prepares to respond. If I wanted you dead, I would have already done so. So too, if I had wanted you incarcerated for that little stunt you pulled at the trial, then you would, ha then you would not have woken up unchained in a hospital bed. I have no desire to do either. Samuel takes a deep breath before continuing. I've been waiting for you to wake up, to make you an offer. Through the trial, didn't, though the trial did not provide us with the clarity I seeked, it did demonstrate the necessity for unity among the survivors. We don't know what has to happen to the world beyond the miasma. We don't know what has happened to the world beyond the miasma. And what little we do know has shown us that the artist has warped this world to something entirely different. But we need to cease the infighting among those of us that have survived and learn to tolerate each other's differences. During the last battle, I witnessed a warrior whose strength rivaled my own, a warrior that fought against a literal force of nature. Although I do not approve of your methods and brazen attitude, it would be unwise if I failed to see the benefits you could provide to the defenses of the tower settlement. So here's what I'm proposing. From this moment on, you use your skills and abilities for the benefit of those around you. Working with the survivors here at the Tower Settlement to bolster our protection from whatever the hell is out there. And in return, I won't throw your ass in prison. Yo, Samuel is not holding back. Nazareth attempts to roar in laughter at Sam's ridiculous statement, but his injuries roar louder and he ceases. Strength that rivals your own? It took you and several others to quell this beast. You're hardly on my level. As for your threat, you aren't a stupid man, Samuel. Whatever act of confinement you have in mind, you know full well I'm powerful enough to break free of it. So where does that leave us now? Nazareth's rage is going in. Nazareth's rage is going in and out and is a new feeling for him that he is not yet used to, and it confuses him. I can't tell you that I plan on using my power and influence to shape this world for the better, and I will be starting with this destroyed settlement. Now leave me. I wish to speak with the mage alone. You're correct. I'm not a stupid man. I know that any confinement, any confinement or trying to place you in would be pointless. Samuel says, stressing the last 
I, let stressing the last I, he said, I know that any confinement we try to place you in would be pointless. But you're wrong about everything else. Take a look around you. You continually create enemies everywhere you go while I forge alliances with those that took you down. There is more to strength than individual martial prowess. Leaning forward in his chair, Samuel continues, and you have mistaken the intentions behind my offer. I'm not threatening. I'm giving you a choice. Either you use your quote unquote power and influence for the betterment of everyone, not just to serve your selfish whims, or you will have made an enemy of at least half of the settlement and together we will take your ass down. It's like, <laughs> we will take you down again. And this time we will make sure you do not cause any trouble. Ooh. Samuel pushes his body against the back of his chair, raising his hands to rest behind his head. Sam is confident. By the way, you may think you're a king, but you are not my king. I do not take orders from you. His eyes return to Oiji, interested to see what other information Oiji will reveal. Oiji nods at Eden's question. All places are dangerous when they are unknown, are they not? But that is what makes them worth exploring, not understanding. I believe we can discuss a trade route for supplying you with wood later this evening. He cocked his head to the side as he studied Sam and Naz's conversation. He didn't try to hide his analytical stare as he were trying to pick the both of them apart. Hadn't expected them to wake. Hadn't expected, hadn't expected him to wake so soon, he thought. Well, Sam, beyond yourself and Eden, I have here letters for the light bearer and the spiritist from the trial. I believe the five of us should sit and share the information we have gathered thus far. Oiji kept his eyes locked on Nazareth as he spoke, gauging his response to his words. While you speak many truths, Wolf, he paused, letting a lie's title for the man hang in the air until it was uneasy. I think you have your own enemies to worry about. I have no interest in seeing this place torn apart. That said, I offer knowledge from beyond the fog. Your presence, while not necessary, is very much appreciated and wanted, Samuel. And I am asking much of you this day. Yo, Oiji's going ham. And, I, and I'm asking much of you this day. Run it back. Run it back. While you speak many truths, woof. He paused, letting Eli's title for the man hang in the air until it was uneasy. Let it marinate a little bit. Woof. I think you have your own enemies to worry about. I have no interest in seeing this place torn apart. That said, I offer knowledge from beyond the fog. Your presence, while not necessary, is very much appreciated and wanted, Samuel. And I am asking much of you this day. While he is no king to you, he did request to speak with me alone. And unfortunately for you, I cannot deny him such. If you would allow me to burden you once more, let me speak to his majesty. <gasps> his majesty? Oiji, 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 sneaky. Samuel's eyes narrow as he attempts to gleam Oiji's motives. He's unsure if he was just using honeyed words to pacify Nazareth or giving warning to Samuel against any more hostile actions. Whether it was one or both, Samuel could see that he had overstayed his welcome. Rising from his seat, he acknowledges Oiji. Very well, since you asked so nicely. Turning back to Nazareth, we don't have to be enemies, but for that to be avoided, I know the settlement needs you to step off your high horse. Although it looks like Zanera knocked you off it. Although it looks like Zanera knocked you off it already, Samuel thanks to himself, stopping himself from saying aloud as he, fi as he figures it would be wise not to push any more Naz Nazareth's buttons. Give and take, that's all I'm saying. Ooh. Walking towards the door, Samuel pauses as he passes Oiji. In a low voice, he says, thank you for your invitation. I realize how difficult it is to include me when many find my sense of justice so polarizing. If I see Olvaz, I will let him know you're looking for him. And with that said, Samuel continues walking to the door. 
his message has been delivered so now he can assist with the restoration efforts eden had faded into the background checking here and there on things but actually being very attentive to what was being said as the only woman among three men it shouldn't be that hard to be underestimated she thought let the big men play their game while i play mine no need to draw unwanted attention to myself nazareth's hasty recovery didn't catch her by surprise though she felt a bit uneasy thinking about handling him while he was unconscious it was way easier while he was unconscious this is not a prison and i do not expect him to stay in bed for much longer i'll just play nice during his stay i hope i hope he'll behave she still didn't have a strong opinion on oiji but as the man was still as the man was still an unknown she was to be cautious around him she was ready to leave him and nazareth alone if they so wished nazareth glares towards samuel until his exit then shifts his gaze upon to oiji mage i seek your counsel for a moment what do you believe to be my folly oiji gave sam a bow of gratitude as he left turning to nazareth he gave a brotherly grin you've seen better days my leech Eden has done us the kindness of tending to your wounds, a debt owed, which I plan to pay in full at your leave. Oiji paused, sliding into a less formal tone. He pondered on the question, a misstep you've made. Bluntly and simply, you've underestimated the strength of the many. As strong as they are, the bear is still wary on the bee and the lion of the ant, for it is their numbers that make them dangerous. Slow it down, he role played. He said a misstep you've made. Bluntly and simply, you've underestimated the strength of the many. As strong as they are, the bear is still wary of the bee and the lion of the ant, for it is their numbers that make them dangerous. Nazareth took a moment to ponder Oiji's words, his confusion and conflicting feelings still heavy within him. Nazareth growls, I don't need you to pay my debts, mage. I am more than capable of doing so. I feel the gods cast me with nothing but ill fortune that day. Even with their pathetic alliance, I was more than strong enough to destroy them, but they, but yet I failed. They failed to see that I strive to make them stronger so that we may worthy, so that we may worthy enough to ascend to the heavens and rule as gods. Hmm. I feel the gods cast me. They fail to see that I strive to make them stronger so that we may so that we may wor be worthy enough to ascend to the heavens and rule as gods. OK, so that's a very powerful what he's saying. What it sounds to me is that whatever he believes in, he believes that there is an ascension that can be that can transpire and that you need to be worthy of it. There is a possibility that there's some truth to that. Because if you think about it, the artist said the, in the previous world, in the past, there were many powerful rogues that grew to power and in some form or another ruined the world with their power. And that's why he did what he did. And he obviously, whether it's through fate or by design, you, the, the people that have survived could be here for a reason. Or maybe he's saying that just like the people in the previous world who ruined it, that could be Nazareth and everyone else that's worthy this time around. I mean, maybe what he believes in is has some now has some is is based in the history of the met of the master plane and how it's possible to prolong life and live on in different iterations of the plane. Hmm. Oiji says, pride the fall of many men, Oiji thought to himself, but as he listened, he saw his opening in the would-be king's own words. See, by your own admittance, even you know unity is required to fell the gods and to rule the heavens. You are wise and your vision is in reach, but Oiji paused for a long time, thinking about his next words carefully. The gods be fickle even more so than mistress fortune yet they set obstacles in front of us to show us the way to bar it the way show us the way not to bar it 
You asked my counsel. I shall never lie to you, for there is honor in being sought for such a thing. That said, counsel is sometimes a bit of a bitter medicine. I could feed you more palatable placebos, but those would not benefit your vision even if they placate your self-image. Weiji offered a bow before he continued, hoping his words were met with understanding. As for debts owed, you may not need me to do such a thing. However, as I said before, it is an honor to be sought for counsel. Think of it as merely my gratitude for your trust and to be rather frank, my king, I doubt you could stop me from doing such a thing in your current condition. If you fear you will owe me something, you do not. So take the gesture of kindness. I am but an ally and friend. I am to be trusted. Slow it down. He role play. Yo, that was good. Run it back. By your own admittance, even you know unity is required to fell the gods and to rule the heavens. You are wise and your vision is in reach. But Luigi paused for a long time thinking about his next words carefully. The gods be fickle even more so than the mistress than mistress fortune. Yet they set obstacles in front of us to show us the way not to bar. You asked me my counsel. I shall never lie to you for there is no honor in being sought for such a thing. That counsel that said counsel is sometimes bitter medicine. I could feed you more palatable placebos, but those would not benefit your vision, even if they placate your self image. As for that's old, you may not need me to do such a thing. However, as I said before, it is an honor to be sought for counsel. Think of it as merely my gratitude for your trust. And to be rather frank, my king, to be rather frank, my king, I doubt you could stop me from doing such a thing in your current condition. If you fear you will owe me something you do not take the gesture, take it as a gesture of kindness. I am but an ally. And a friend nor nazar says nor would i ever want a lie to twist from your tongue towards me i wouldn't seek your counsel if i doubt it you mage i can see it in your eyes you feel i am a victim of my own hubris don't you this defeat has shifted something within me and i'm at a loss on how to carry out my ideals now my rage has ever been a constant my rage has ever been a constant that I could draw on for strength, but now the rage doesn't feel the same anymore. I don't know how to explain it, but the intensity of it has faded and my thoughts are processing louder and more acute. Nazareth's voice lowers as he is unsure about his next words. Is this madness? Luigi couldn't help the laugh that escaped his lungs. Madness? Forgive my mirth is not at your expense. No, friend, that is not madness. You were being reborn like the great serpent of old shedding its skin to grow even larger. Yes, you will be stronger from this if you allow yourself. I have no doubt. Dive deeper into those thoughts, for it is the depths and dark corners riches are made of. Oiji smiled and gave Naz a clap on the shoulder, calling forth the subtle threads of healing magic he'd gathered in his time. He cast simple heal, hoping that the feeling of rejuvenation would be associated with the conversation and not any spell or magics. What? Slow it down. He role played. He said he puts his hand on his shoulder calling forth the subtle threads of healing magic he'd gathered in his time and casts his, his simple magic ability, simple heal, hoping that the feeling of rejuvenation would be associated with his words, with, with the conversation, not magic that he's casting. And he says hubris is a necessary trait in every leader. Someone needs to have the gall and assurance to decide. No. Oiji is going ham. Ah! Nazareth stares at Oiji with serious eyes, unamused. He takes a moment and thinks about what he wants to share. My mother was a queen. She was the strongest warrior I've ever known. She birthed me alone in the midst of a, cat a cataclysmic storm. 
fire falling from the skies, winds capable, of, winds capable of moving mountains, and while the ground violently shook from beneath her, she told me it was the gods honoring my birth, and that one day I would be the one to rule all. She taught me how to fight. She taught me how. She taught me how I would rule. Nazareth's eyes turn draconic with a slit for pupils and his aura spikes for a second with his emotions heightening. Then he calms. She never taught me how to manage these conflicting feelings. Luigi nods. A strong and noble woman. Not all lessons. Not all lessons are we taught. Some will. Not all lessons are we taught. Some we learn through trial and error. Forgive me for prying deeper, but do you feel betrayed by your strength? Or is it fear? No. Let me restate that. Are you disappoint are you disappointed are you disappointed with yourself more than others? Nazareth looks at Oiji again very seriously. I killed her in battle. It was her wish, and my final test is a warrior. The only time I have ever felt fear was on that and it was a grand battle. Never have I met a warrior of her equal and I cherish her memory. I am disappointed in myself for this moment of weakness above all else. I feel, the dis I feel that despite the gods cursing my success, that I need to grow stronger and more than just strength. Oiji took a moment to process the man before him. He had questions, and a part of him felt a tinge of pity for Nas. You've endured much, my king. Your mother forged you in the fires of battle and war, physical conflicts. I, Weiji hesitated, looking back at Eden. He lowered his voice. I had children and a wife once, snatched from me by the world of magic, shadows, entry. Nearly everything I have learned, the magics I've mastered, have been to conquer the same world that took the most dear to me. I say that to say I am no warrior, but that new strength you must conquer. But that new strength you must conquer, my lord. I have tried its path. I know it well. This world of politics and influence. The secret strength needed to unify, conquer, or even hide that which needs knowing. Oiji's voice held and held held an ache, held an ache in it as he spoke. As if his mastery of such things, the path he'd walked for so long now, it was not a gift or a skill he reveled in. No. There in the underlying tones of his words was a hint of disgust. There is no nobility in such things. If my study of the dark arts have garnered me any wisdom, it is this. No unified or peaceable land can be such without the sharpest of blades and a few willing to muddy their souls for peace. Magic has always been the best blade. And my lord? No, king. And my lord? And my lord? No, king should muddy his soul for his vision. Oiji paused and looked to the and looked toward the would-be king square in the eye. And looked in the, and looked the would-be king square in the eye, dropping all pretense for once. You leave such work to men like me. Eden kept herself occupied with the small tasks, though her attention was divided as she listened warily to the conversation between the two men, straining to catch every word uttered when they weren't deliberately lowering their voices. On one hand, she found herself taken aback by Nazareth's shift in demeanor, a stark contrast from the man she had known him to be. On the other hand, it became increasingly apparent to Eden that Oiji's true motives were suspect, cloaked in a veil of flattery. The words that dripped from his lips like poisoned honey were unsettling, reminiscent of those once uttered by the very counselors who had guided her late husband's reign. My king, my king, he simpered to Eden, bearing witness to Oiji's transparently manipulative act was an almost physically painful experience. There could be little doubt in her mind that this shady character would eventually attempt to appease her as well. No doubt couched in the promise of such of some seemingly lucrative deal regarding the resources needed for the reconstruction. Not that she would refuse such an offer outright for in Eden's cautious existence being underestimated by others had proven to be a shield against those who would seek to take advantage. Nazareth looks at Oiji with quizzical look. What are you saying, mage? Speak plainly. Do you mean to join my cause in conquering all? Softened 
his gaze. Luigi softened his gaze and fell back on his formalities. I will always offer true counsel, and if need be, the blade I have honed over my years, there is still much to accomplish before your vision can be achieved. You have me until such a time I am no longer needed. Nazareth laughs a mighty laugh, disregarding the pain it causes. You've made a wise decision. My body is recovering fast. The medicus here is talented. Which is funny because the medicus that's healing him, um, he's really being healed. His his healing is is solely fueled by the postuses that Ianga charged with her magic. So it's Eden's potions, but Ianga also made potions and charged them when she was helping Eden. And that's what's being used to heal him in addition to his fast healing. So that's why it's incredibly fast. You've made a wise decision. My body is recovering fast. The medicus here is talented. When I'm fully recovered, let us reconvene and talk about future plans. Oiji nodded. At your leave, sir. Sire, I've procured a home. When you are feeling better, we can finish our discussion there. He gave Nazareth a bow and then offered his forearm in a brotherly gesture. I have to seek out a few others before I return to my studies. Until we speak again. Yo, that was dope. Yo, Oiji is killing it. I don't know what he's up to. What he's up to. He's up to something, though. In the open with it, too. So maybe not. Nazareth is back. Nazareth is having a change in character. For His character is evolving. I'll say that. Let's take a look on the road northwards. So, so this is when this is taking place when Zanera and Willem and Sky were heading north in, in Lazuli. After the execution of the artist and keen to discover more about the land beyond the settlement, a small group gathers toward, together to face the road north and the darkness that obscures the fate of the lands beyond. This particular gathering involves Willem. Sky, Lazuli, and Zanera. Seeing Willem and Sky make their way past the gates to where Lazuli and herself have been waiting, Zanera can't resist a smirking remark. You are late. The comment is not serious, for they are unlikely to leave without the other two, but Zanera is keen to breaking the solemn, solemn, solemnity and trepidation that hangs over their ensuing journey. She seems recovered from her earlier ordeal, her clothes washed and hair freshly tied. Her bandolier and pouches are brimming with all the supplies she can spare from the hospital, giving her ample to work with should any of them require medical attention on the road. Will traveled light. A small sack carried simple supplies used more for cooking than any other task, save those that could be used for sleep. A small bedroll wrapped in a tightly woven basket, blanket, to keep the cool and the damp was to keep out the cool and the damp was fastened to the top. Are we now? The man smirked, tired from his day's affairs, both those seen and unseen by his companions. Maybe you were just a little early. A sigh accompanied the shake of his head, dismissing the notion. He wasn't here to fight with them. I could hardly blame you for being eager after your fight. When I was a younger man, I too had a bit more pep after a fight than before. It was honest and did something to mention the innocent that was likely to hang around them if left unaddressed. At least it was one thing he could address. Zanera shrugs. When the first attack hit the settlement, there was so much going on. Many didn't take note of the elemental that was entwined in her soul, but she's now acutely aware that Ayanga flexed her power in a much more obvious manner recently. Oh, that wasn't me. She taps her temple idly. That wasn't me. She's still sleeping it off. I hear she made a bit of a spectacle, but you might say I'm now a lot more keen to be elsewhere when certain people wake up in the hospital. Willem nodded. He understood to a small extent the difference between Zanera and her compatriot from the discussion they'd had over the campfire the night before. He was surprised that a psychological change that the psycho that a psychological change in one didn't mean the same in the other. Adrenaline and the like. He wondered if the same was true for injuries. A bit of a spectacle. He chuckled at the understatement. 
Even from where he'd hidden himself away, Will was plenty aware of the conflict. Can't say I blame you. In my experience, those who ask others to bow aren't those aren't, aren't the ones who forgive and forget. He looked he looked around at the rest of them. I can't speak for everyone, but I'm not one for leaving anyone behind. So at least you've got me and the artist. If I told the old man could keep him if I, and the artist and the artist, if the old man could keep him in check. But Willem knew the passenger's silence was one of the observations, not the feet. Zanera, that's kind. Thank you. Zanera shifts her gear a little one on uh, shifts her shifts her gear a little one on her shoulders looking out at the darkness that encroaches it could all be for nothing it could all be for nothing so easily a lot of people need us to find what's out there food building materials even a clue as to what world is waiting for us for that you have me and ayanga she smirks one of us has a better bedside manner though oiji ras house of mystic studies Oiji Raz stepped into the abode he originally procured for the boys Ellen Dell. He sighed, his mind pondering the events of the trial, the discovery in the east, but found its way back to the boys. He shook his head, hoisting the bundle of wood over his shoulder. He set his mind to his experiments and studies. He smiled at his handiwork. He'd crafted a sign and a knocker from the wood they found in the east. Both glowed with a dark, hollow light of bluish purple flame. The knocker was that of a large horned dragon, its eyes alight with the same fire, the ring, and its nose. He'd carved his personal sigil and a spell to alert him whenever someone knocked, regardless of where he was. The sign bore his personal sigil, a veiled shield, emblazoned with a long, beastly talon. It read beneath the sigil, Ra's house. The first steps of setting his wards was complete. He set to securing and warding the rest of his home, taking particular care with his study, adding extra precautions to his notes and newfound discoveries, including the makeshift vault for the material he'd gathered. Once finished, he sat down and began to ponder his next steps. He'd need more material for study, someone to help outfit, someone to help outfit the warband, someone to help him in his own endeavors, as well as to others, as well as others to help keep a thumb on things. But he was not, but he was just one man. He couldn't do, he couldn't do this without others. His home was only a small part of his plans. If the Ra's house was to rise in power and influence, he needed people with pool on his side. That woman that started the hospital, that started the hospital seemed to be making an effort to build and gather some semblance of influence. Then there was the one ally wanted to break, a man of grit, a man of his grit was hard to find and even harder to still bend to your will. Ally and Naz both were dangerous and needed to be dealt with accordingly and delicately. And finally, there was the light bearer. That one was truly an enigma. A discussion with him was long overdue. As Oiji pondered, as Oiji pondered this, he sat down and began to draft his letters. All right. And they haven't, it doesn't seem they responded to the letters yet. And then he goes and he gives them the letters, but they haven't, they haven't come to the house of mystics studies yet. All right. Silent gates. So this is taking place with the group who are at the silent gates. And if I recall, there is some sort of field that really causes damage to the mind. And you must be psychic to enter, Willem says. They're all going to die and it's going to be your fault, Willem. The artist's voice hissed in the old man's mind as he considered his options. Will winced, not under my care. Quiet down. A hollow laugh echoed in response as the large man shook his head. If these beetles do what the merchant claims, I could disguise them in a stew, possibly fortify their effects. Otherwise, I could craft each of you a protective satchel. Though I don't know how well a charm would fare in there. It could last until the first loud noise or crumble to dust once we leave. It's difficult to say. 
spirit or fickle that Zanera. After learning something of the effects of this place, Zanera takes careful steps back from the gates, past the dead bodies until she's about 20 feet or so away from the first body. She tries to test her voice softly to know where the boundary of the silent gates and its strange compulsion lies. After experimenting and finding a lack of intense pain or bleeding, she makes a mark in the dirt and talks softly to those near. We can at least have some discussions here before we venture further. Once we get closer, obviously we will need to utilize the beetles or find some other method. Willem followed Zanera to the edge of the gate's effect, though it took him a moment to realize what she was marking. There aren't a lot of options. The beetles are one, and if anyone has any others, I'm open to them. He commented as he took a large nearby stone and began to bury it, bury it upright. Whatever we decide, we should get, we should either press forward or seek what is in the settlement that holds value enough for such an enchantment. Heading back to the tower seems premature. What have we really learned of this new world? Will inquired as he traced a rune into the stone. This rune was for death. It glowed faintly before fading from view. The artist cackled in his mind. New world, Willem? Who knows your traveler's marks anymore? Who do you hope to save like this? We'll let several more rock. We'll set several more rocks to either side of the large one uh, of the large one to indicate the boundary of the effect. Anyone can learn the marks of the traveler. They will teach them at Eden's school and maybe someone in this new world will know will know it as we explore. Zanera, I'm all for investigating further. You're right, heading back with nothing but a story isn't ideal. I wonder if the beetles have either a link to whatever spirit is creating the enchantment, or if it's substance inside them that negates the magic. The first is interesting enough, but if I could isolate or reproduce the second, it would be an amazing discovery. I suggest experimenting in a safer setting, however, but I'd like to bring back something solid that gives everyone some hope. Will. The old man was silent for a moment before offering something of a compromise. The beetles the merchant showed us were living. What if we gather a few males and females? We can breed more beetles and perhaps even fortify them with other ingredients. In the meantime, while we're finding a better way to explore beyond the silent gates, why don't we travel west and explore more of the blank canvas before us? Willem hoped that pulling back the veil on the miasma might yield something of value all right man look so i'm all caught up on the role play i am going to roll out the next series of events stay tuned Oiji is deceptive conniving even but he's still noble and that's why that's why it's so interesting to see you role play this out because obviously it's all out on front on the table right your thoughts and stuff but there's still it's not the sea it's not too it's it's because it's noble um it's just packaged differently and uh it's hard not to respect that it's like you're not wrong but i don't know if you were here earlier OG, when i said that um i'm i am i am actually on the market for a new website to use I don't use World Anvil to its max potential and I pay for it and I'm not using everything. So I would prefer to have something a bit simpler, just a place to to store my um, lore and all the extra stuff like character profiles and stuff. That's extra. But whatever you have in mind, let me know. I'd be interested in to check it out. Thanks for watching and prepare for the show to continue. Oh.